Hello to all of our Pleasant Green parishioners and to all of our listening audience. Uh, This is Minister Leonard Harris, and as always, it is a privilege as well as a pleasure to be able to share the Word of God with you once again. Uh, This is for our Sunday School lesson on December the 4th, 2022. And this is lesson number one. It is out of unit one. And we are sharing from our study guide, the Faith Pathway. And unit one uh, titles it, God Prepares the Way. God, not man, but God prepares the way. And then our title for this particular Sunday is A Special Promise. Our devotional reading is the book of John, the 10th chapter, verses 22 through 30. And our background scripture is Luke the first chapter, verses 5 through 23, and our printed passage for this lesson is Luke, the first chapter, verses 8 through 20. And our key verse is Luke, first chapter, verse 13, and I'll read the NIV. The angel said to him, Do not be afraid, Zechariah. Your prayer has been heard. Your wife Elizabeth will bear a son, and you are to call him John. Our lesson's aims are to understand the pronouncement of John's birth in the context of the coming Messiah, examine Zachariah's mixed emotions and identify with his feelings, and wait expectantly on God, confident that he will answer prayer. And then our lesson has three sections to it. Or three parts, they are all identified with the letter D, and the first is duty, and that is Luke 1, verses 8 through 11, and then our second is destiny, that's Luke 1, verses 12 through 16, And our closing section is Luke 1, uh, verses 17 17 through 20, and that one is titled Doubt. So we have duty, destiny, and doubt. And as always, we ask the Lord to bless this indulgence, so let us go before the Lord in prayer. Eternal God, the all-knowing, all-powerful, and ever-present in all places at all times, we count this a blessing that we are able to study thy word and to learn your order and your divine plan for humankind. And as we, as we prepare our hearts and our minds to receive what you unfold before us. Father, we just ask that by your Spirit, you will give us the conviction to live out the things that we hear, that we might be better prepared to serve your people. And we ask it all in the name of Christ, and for his sake we ask it. Amen. So our lesson 
is dealing with the life of Zacharias and his wife Elizabeth. And uh, they, Zacharias is a priest from the lineage of Moses and Aaron and uh, is performing a task, an assignment uh, that was held in honor. Uh, those that fulfilled this duty held it with honor and with great expectation. They uh, saw it as a privilege uh, and it was, re they recognized that it was not just bestowed upon anyone, but uh, which made them all the more uh, committed to the duty of serving when it fell upon them. So as we look at verses 8 through 11, we recognize here that it says, I'm reading the NIV, it says, Once when Zechariah division was on duty, and he was serving as priest before God. He was chosen by lot, according to the custom of the priesthood, to go into the temple of the Lord and burn incense. And when the time for the burning of the incense came, all of the assembled worshipers were praying outside. Then an angel of the Lord appeared to him standing at the right side of the altar of incense. And a couple of things that we uh, shall pull from this. And that is the division. So the duty of serving in the temple had passed through the priesthood, through different groups and different lineages in the priesthood. And it would fall upon a particular grouping or division. And at that time, they would be, so a selection would take a place. And then a priest would be pulled from that division or grouping to perform the duty of praying in the temple, uh, rendering prayer for the people of Israel. And so it says that the choosing uh, of the priest was done by a custom of the priesthood, and it was casting of lots, casting of lots. And... One of the things that we find out of the casting of the lot is contained in the lot. There were valuable items and uh, some would have sacred texts on, on uh, paper. Uh, they would have uh, sacred texts. Uh, that was uh, fulfillment of scriptures and that had a influence and impact on the people as a whole and sometimes on the priest. And sometimes there would be uh, emblems, things that represented the different tribes of Israel. Uh, symbols of, of value and significance. And, uh, and then sometimes there would be uh, certain uh, uh, writings and tablets uh, that would be inscribed on stone or on clay tablets. And, and these things of value would be gathered into uh, a cloth or in, in some type of containment. And then when the time would come 
as the custom was practiced, they would cast their lots. And many times the ones who would cast their lot first, they would look at the, uh, the collection, the abundance of the different items collected. And then they would make a choosing of this will be the priest that will perform this task at this time. Now, just so we uh, connect some things about the casting of lots, we also know that uh, in the book of John, the 19th chapter, and the 24th verse, uh, at the crucifixion of Christ, the soldiers themselves understood, the Roman soldiers understood the customs of the Hebrews. And they said at the time, which was a fulfillment of scripture, but they began to cast lots for the garments of Christ. And this was the fulfillment of scripture in the 22nd number of Psalms, uh, the 18th verse, which reads, They divide my garments among them, and for my clothing they cast lots. And so uh, we visit here what transpired in the process of, of identifying or selecting Zacharias as the priest who was performing his duty in the temple. And again, uh, we recognize that it was uh, what his duty was at the time. What was he performing? Uh, he was praying on behalf of the people of Israel. And as a part of this uh, ceremony, uh, as a part of the practices of it, uh, he was burning incense and then praying. And the first verses of our lesson tell us that while he was doing this, while he was burning the incense at the altar, and while he was praying on behalf of the people, that the people would gather in a multitude, large grouping, and on the outside of the temple, they would be praying as Zacharias or as the priest was praying on the inside. And as these two different forms of worship and fulfillment of ceremony unto God while they were performing and demonstrating their service and recognition of God, the text tells us that an angel of God, an angel of the Lord, appeared to him standing on the right side of the altar of incense. And... There brings us into the destiny. So first we have the duty and then we come to the destiny. And in the destiny, here is where we get somewhat of a uh, inside look into how uh, Zacharias was... Uh, how, how Zacharias was overwhelmed and what was Zacharias' response uh, when the presence of the angel of the Lord was in his midst. And it says 
uh, as a part of our lessons aims that we understand the pronouncement of John's birth in context with the coming Messiah. And that is going to follow in our uh, destiny as well as into the ending of our lesson. But also it asks us to examine Zachariah's uh, mixed emotions and identify with his feelings. So when we look at verses 12 through 16, it says that Zacharias was startled. He was gripped with fear when he saw the angel. But the angel responded and provided words of comfort. And he said to Zachariah, don't be afraid. Your prayer has been heard. Your wife, Elizabeth, will bear you a son, and you are to call him John. And then he goes on to say what the purpose of John's life would be. And he said, he will be a joy and a delight to you, and many will rejoice because of his birth. For he will be great in the sight of the Lord. He is never to take wine or fermented drink. And he will be filled with the Holy Spirit even before he is born. He would be filled with the Holy Spirit in the womb of Elizabeth, of his mother. And he will bring back many of the people of Israel to the Lord their God. Now, when we think of the wording in Scripture and how that caused Zachariah's reaction, uh, one of the things we note first is, is that the priest, uh, as they would enter into the temple to pray, their responsibility or their task was to pray for the people, to pray for the multitude. So they were not to uh, exercise a certain uh, practice of praying just for self, although them, they would be included in the prayer for the people, but they were not to cite out requests or petitions just for themselves, but to pray for the multitude. And so when we recognize this, uh, we uh, can somewhat gather and understand why Zacharias was fearful and maybe even alarmed uh, when the angel said to him that your prayer has been heard and Elizabeth will bear you a son and you will call his name John. So one of the things is, is that Zacharias probably had not prayed. Uh, we learn in the lesson that Zacharias and Elizabeth were way up in age. They were way beyond the childbearing age. And so it probably had been some time since Zachariah had prayed for a son, had prayed for a child. And so for the angel to uh, reveal to him that your prayer has been heard and that now you are going to be blessed with the son. If I can understand it's startling Zacharias because he probably had forgotten that he had asked for such a blessing because it had been maybe such a long time ago when he and Elizabeth had made that request. And another thing that we look at is um, when we 
uh, look at the uh, the recognition of age when we look at uh, their age, uh, the uh, background to our lesson uh, talks about how there have been similar stories of matriarchs uh, through the Bible who were barren and were elderly. We know of the story of Sarah, the wife of Abraham, and how she was barren and uh, elderly or up in age beyond the normal childbearing age. And then also of Rebecca, the wife of Isaac, who also was barren for 20 years. And then Rachel, uh, the beloved wife of Jacob, uh, she was also uh, barren. And then Manoah, the mother of Samson and Hannah. And so there had been uh, women in the Bible who had gone through a period where at one time they were uh, uh, of childbearing age. But as that period of time passed, they were beyond it. And so again, that would make one question what they are hearing, even though they are in awe of the presence of an angel, a messenger from God in their midst. But what they hear doesn't resonate with their thinking in the natural. And something that uh, we sometimes cannot distinguish between is the natural and the spiritual presence of God and recognizing in the spirit of God. Uh, we know in the second Corinthians, the first chapter uh, verses uh, 20, that it tells us uh, that uh, all the promises of God in him are yea and amen. When God makes a promise, first of all, God is not a man that he should lie. But when God makes a promise, the fulfillment of what God says is not something that is placed on the back, back burner and forgotten about. But in God's timing, it is fulfilled. And so we want to also uh, look at destiny. And one of the things we want to uh, cite uh, about the destiny here is the first thing would be out of the presence of John. Now, uh, the text here is telling us that uh, when the Spirit presented itself unto Zechariah, that it even gave Zacharias the name to call his son. And so we want to see uh, the fulfillment of this destiny, looking at it through the lens of the book of John. So in the book of John, the first chapter, uh, again, we're addressing destiny. And uh, in the sixth verse, it tells us this. It says, there was a man sent from God whose name was John. This man came for a witness to bear witness of the light that all through him might believe. Now, not that all through John might believe, but that all through the light might believe. Verse 8 tells us, He was not that light, but he was sent to bear witness of that light. 
Now, when we look at, again, the uh, fulfillment of this destiny, in the third chapter of Luke, and uh, we'll go to that now, in the third chapter of Luke, and we'll start at the fourth verse. Uh, here, again, we're going to uh, just address some of the concerns about the destiny being fulfilled of John. So the third chapter and the fourth verse. And it reads in this light. It says, As it is written in the book of the word of Isaiah the prophet, saying, and in your leisure you can uh, find this in the 40th chapter of the book of Isaiah, uh, starting at the third verse and reading onward. But it says here, the voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Every valley shall be filled and every mountain and hill brought low. The crooked places shall be made straight and the rough ways smooth and all flesh shall see the salvation of God. So when our verses in destiny said that he will be a joy and a delight to you and will many rejoice because of his birth, it is explaining to us what he was going to fulfill. What was he charged with to do? And if we would read uh, further in that same chapter of Luke, if we just come down to the uh, 10th verse. Now, as John is speaking uh, to the people in the wilderness, speaking to people that uh, somehow are not uh, in Jerusalem, they are scattered and in different areas, some remote areas, uh, out into rural or out into uh, areas that were not metropolitan centers. And so here, when he was speaking to the people, the 10th verse, it says, so the people asked him, saying, what shall we do then? Because John was preaching to them to repent of their sins and make way or make straight their paths to the Lord. And so they began to inquire and said, then, well, what shall we do then? He answered and said to them, he who has two tunics, let him give to one, let him give to him who has none, and he who has food, let him do likewise. So as they began to inquire about, well, what should we do? He said, those of you who have clothing and you find those that have none, then give to those that have none. And then those that are hungry, he said, who has no food, let him do likewise. If you find those that are without food, the daily substances of the day, feed them. So then they went further and they said, uh, the tax collectors also came to be baptized. And they said to him, teacher, what shall we do? And he said to them, collect no more than what is appointed for you. In other words, stop manipulating the people and taking more than what is required. In other words, stop cheating the people. Stop charging the people more than what they should be charged. And then 
outside of the general people and the tax collectors, the soldiers also inquired in him, and they said, likewise, the soldiers asked him, saying, and what shall we do? So he said to them, do not intimidate anyone or accuse falsely and be content with your wages. So now, when we look at what John was charged to do, and we see that the things that the angel had spoken to Zacharias about that the people were going to be glad of his birth. Uh, then we see what John was charged to do. And we recognize that he was to correct the behavior and the attitudes and the practices of the people and prepare them to receive the Messiah, the Christ the one that they had been waiting on. And so we recognize uh, what was the purpose. We understand uh, mixed emotions on Zacharias after he met the angel. But look at the last part where the doubt comes in. And it says... And he will go on before the Lord in the spirit and power of Elijah to turn the hearts of the parents to their children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the righteous to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. And Zechariah asked the angel, how can I be sure of this? I am an old man, and my wife is well along in years. And the angel said to him, I am Gabriel. I stand in the presence of God. And I have been sent to speak to you and tell you this good news. And now you will be silent and not able to speak until the day this happens, because you did not believe my words, which will come true at their appointed time. As we said earlier, sometimes we are dismayed in our natural selves, and we don't see beyond our own capabilities. And that is a good assessment. But if we are in the temple and we are praying unto God to intervene and to do what seems impossible and what in many cases is impossible for us to perform and do ourselves. And if we are diligent uh, duty bound in following God's will and God's purpose in our lives. And then God sends a messenger from his own presence. A messenger from his own presence. And he comes to tell us what we have only spoken unto God about. And then the angel of the Lord fulfills it and says, your prayer has been heard. And what you asked for will now be a physical blessing in your presence. And so because Zacharias doubted it, the angel of the Lord was instructed to... Make Zacharias mute, sometimes referred to as dumb, but it was to close Zacharias' mouth because the business of God is not in our presence to be questioned or to be doubted 
are to become a discussion among ourselves as to how probable it may or may not be. And so since the angel appeared unto Zacharias and told Zacharias and Zacharias the uh the uh Zacharias displayed a response of doubt the angel was instructed to tell him your mouth will be sealed until the day of the appointed time and that way you will not be able to dispel any doubt you won't be able to develop a whole collective engagement among people uh, proposing their pros and cons about what they think and what they heard and what someone told them about the experience that Zacharias had. And so in our closing, we hope that something was said that gives us insight and some direction into the fulfillment of God's work in our midst. And as always, our prayer is that the blessings of God may continue to rest, rule, and abide with those who are called according to his purpose. God bless you and God keep you.